Hi everyone, I am Juno Mobi and I'm very excited about this video today because we are going to create 50 different Halloween costumes in the game Stardew Valley. All the way from more basic outfits like the classic witch, to more specific characters like Shrek and Cowgirl Barbie for example. But wait, before you exit out because maybe it's past Halloween or you're not interested in the costume specifically, I suggest you stick around if you just want some outfit inspo as there will be lots of different tops, bottoms, and hat options shown that may just be up your alley. Of course, you do not have to stay, but I would love to have you. So without further ado, let's jump into creating 50 Halloween costumes in Stardew Valley. We're gonna start off with a Halloween classic and make ourselves a witch costume. To start it all off, we will pull out the trusty sewing machine to sew our top with cloth and a cauliflower and our bottoms with cloth and a sunflower and dye both a matching black. And just like that, we have our witch's dress. Coming back to our sewing machine, we will add a golden pumpkin alongside our cloth and there we go. We have the base of our witch's costume complete, but to take it a step further, let's head to the Shrine of Illusions in the wizard's basement, a place we will find ourselves often in this video, and give ourselves a little alphabet makeover as the final finishing touch. Our next costume is a take on the classic pumpkin, but make it Dwight Schrute from the office style. Adding cloth and a jack-o'-lantern to our sewing machine, we've created the main part of our costume, the pumpkin mask. Then to build around that, we will sew cloth and esprit and cloth and a strawberry to create our suit, dyeing the bottoms to match. Almost complete, we will change into brown shoes, and with a trip to the Shrine of Illusions to hide our hair, the costume is ready to go trick-or-treating in. What is another classic Halloween costume? A skeleton, of course! Taking cloth and a bone fragment, we've created the perfect skeleton shirt. For a not-so-perfect pair of pants, we will add cloth and cranberries and dye them white to resemble the bone. Not perfect, but they will have to do. <laughs> then we will pop on some white shoes, and for the final touch, we will wear the reward received from the Adventurer's Guild for defeating 50 skeletons in-game, the skeleton mask. And just like that, we've created our Stardew skeleton costume. I'm sure you've seen at least one person you know dress up as this next costume for Halloween, a cat. Not to reference The Office again, but we are basically going to create Pam's cat costume from Season 2, Episode 5, titled Halloween. Starting with the classic cat ears and whiskers, we will head to the Hat Mouse to pick up a pair for 1,000, which is possible as we've reached the achievement for having 10 hearts with 8 people. Then, for the rest of the costume, we will sew together cloth and copper ore and cloth and a wild plum, dye both pieces black, and by adding some dark shoes, we're a black cat, a Halloween classic. The last of our Halloween classics is a vampire bride? A corpse bride? Zombie? Something in that vicinity. <laughs> Honestly though, the most accurate representation of this next costume is probably the ex-wife costume Katie Heron dresses up as in Mean Girls. To get started, we will sew together cloth and an ornamental fan and cloth and a sunflower, dyeing the bottoms to match the top, to create our wedding gown. After popping on some white shoes, we will add cloth and a pearl to the sewing machine to create our bride's veil. And with a trip to the Shrine of Illusions to give us this ghostly look, our outfit is complete. This next costume is from not only a film series from the 90s, but also more recently was made into a popular TV show just last year, and sticking with the Halloween vibes as well, we are making a Wednesday Addams Halloween costume. With our sewing machine, we will add cloth and green algae to create this colored shirt that we will dye black, and then adding cloth and a poppy, we will dye it as well to match. Of course, we will put on dark shoes, and to pull the whole look together, we'll head to the Shrine of Illusions to dye our hair black and change our hairstyle to Wednesday's iconic braids, and we're finished! Moving from the Halloween vibes to full-on as seen on TV, our next costume is from the biggest movie of this year, Barbie, and the costume we're recreating is Cowgirl Barbie. To create our vest-looking crop top, we'll add cloth and wheat to our sewing machine and dye it Barbie pink, and for the bell-bottoms, we will create the baggy pants in Stardew by sewing together cloth and a slime egg, also dyeing these pink. Heading to the Shrine of Illusions, we will recreate our best Barbie blonde hair, and for the finishing touches, we will put on our white cowgirl boots, and because there is no white cowgirl hat, we'll opt for this pink one you can get from the Hat Mouse for 1k, which was unlocked for selling 300 of one crop, and there we go! A Cowgirl Barbie Halloween Costume. This next recreation is not from the most recent of movies like our previous costume, but instead is one of the biggest movie franchises of all time, dating back to 1977. We are making Princess Leia from Star Wars. In our sewing machine, we will add cloth and copper ore to create a turtleneck that we will dye white, and for the skirt, we'll add cloth and a sunflower, also dyeing it white. Keeping with the white theme of this outfit, we will put on some white shoes, and then at the Shrine of Illusions, we will make the changes to our hair that will truly make all of the difference in this costume. This hairdo couldn't have been a coincidence, right? It's too perfect. And with that, our costume is complete. 
From the TV show that has what has been themed as the best episode in all of TV history, we are making a Walter White costume from Breaking Bad. Trying to recreate his look as best we can, we'll add cloth and beer into our sewing machine and cloth and a strawberry, dyeing the pants a dark tan, to get our outfit. Then, adding brown shoes and heading to the hat mouse to purchase the bowler hat which is unlocked for reaching the millionaire achievement. How fitting. We will add our finishing touches at the Shrine of Illusions to move the hair on top of our head to our face, dyeing it brown, and unfortunately there is no accessory for his glasses, but even so, the outfit is complete. I'm not sure how popular this next character is, but they are from a movie that helped launch the hugely successful career of Jim Carrey back in the 90s. The costume we are creating is The Mask, a movie that as a kid I got from a cereal box actually. Adding cloth and mango sticky rice into our sewing machine, we've created this yellow suit jacket, and then by adding cloth and a cranberry, dyeing it to match, and adding brown shoes, the outfit is coming together. After heading to the Shrine of Illusions to change our hair, we have two options. We can use what is actually a green mask from the hat mouse to finish the outfit, but what I think represents this look a lot better is to actually dye our skin the green color and instead use the yellow straw hat, which is one at the egg hunt in the game, to really pull everything together. If you grew up in the early 2000s, you may appreciate this next one. We are creating the Genovian princess herself from the famous movie poster to the film The Princess Diaries. To start, we will add cloth and a super cucumber and cloth and honey to our sewing machine, dyeing both pieces a cream color to create our ball gown. After putting on our white shoes, we will head to the hat mouse to buy our tiara for 1k which is unlocked for reaching 5 hearts with 4 people, and to really nail this look down, we will add the finishing touches at the Shrine of Illusions, and taking this and this will give you a princess. Paolo is exhausted. Keeping with the theme of growing up in the early 2000s, our next costume is the animated Lizzie from Lizzie McGuire. Let's jump right in and add cloth and a radish, dyeing it the bright pinkish color to create our top. For the bottoms, we will add cloth and a strawberry, dyeing them the bright jean blue color, and our clothing is complete. Unfortunately, there are no orange shoes in the game, so we'll opt for these brownish ones, and as our final change, we will head to the Shrine of Illusions to get that yellow blonde hair. The length isn't quite right, but it was what I saw as the best option. And we're done. Keeping with the cartoons, our next costume is heavily inspired by The Flintstones, a classic show aging back to the 60s. Adding cloth and a prehistoric tool, we've created the caveman shirt, and by adding cloth and a poppy and a little dye, our clothing is complete. A good nod to Fred Flintstone. There are no bare feet options in Stardew, so we will go with brown and finish it all off by adding cloth and a prehistoric tibia to our sewing machine to give the outfit a pebbles touch. The last of our TV looks is one that was actually originally from a different form of media, a comic strip, but became a beloved character that found himself on the big screens in the 60s. If you guessed Charlie Brown, you'd be correct. Starting by adding cloth and a horseradish to our sewing machine, we have our Good Grief shirt. And to complete the outfit, we will create shorts by sewing cloth and a blueberry together, dyeing them black, and putting on some brown shoes. To get the signature cue ball look, we'll head to the Shrine of Illusions, and there we have it. The only thing missing is a little squiggle of hair. We've reached the jungle. The first animal costume we will be creating is a tiger. Adding cloth and corn and cloth and a strawberry to our sewing machine and dyeing them both orange, our base is made. Although there are no orange shoes, as stated earlier, these shoes are a fairly good match, and to tie it all together, we will wear the tiger hat, which is a rare drop from slaying tiger slimes. And our outfit is complete. The frog is our next costume, and to get the ball rolling, we will start with the frog hat, which is found in Gormont's cave on Ginger Island by fishing in his ponds. Then to complete the look, we will add cloth and an emerald to our sewing machine, as well as cloth and a strawberry, dyeing the pants to match, and with a change of shoes, our costume is created. Another cute green creature is next, a dinosaur. Starting with our bottoms, we can create the perfect pants with cloth and dino mayo, and for a matching top, we will add cloth and copper ore and dye it. Then for the shoes, here I've added brown, but green is a better option, and then as the final touch, we will add cloth and a dinosaur egg to give us the hat that truly tops it all off. Now before I go into these next three, I need to give a warning. These costumes are truly cursed. Good in theory, but seriously, genuinely cursed. We will start with the penguin. Going with the idea of a tuxedo penguin, I'll add cloth and a rare disc to create this tuxedo top. Then by adding cloth and a strawberry and dyeing it to match, our outfit is getting closer to what I'm looking for. Again, no orange shoes, so the dark boots is what we'll throw on, and heading to the hat mouse, we will grab the bowler hat, and this next part is where it both comes together and becomes cursed in one fell swoop. At the Shrine of Illusions, we will add the beak accessory and dye our hair a dark color as to not stand out. And there it is. Seriously cursed. 
The next cursed outfit in this lineup is a duck, and I'm sure you can see where this is going. To start, we will add cloth and a duck egg into our sewing machine to create this green jacket shirt as it has the coloring we want to see. Then next, we will make the pants with cloth and a strawberry, dye them orange to represent duck legs. Once again, there are no orange shoes, so we will use an alternative. And at the Shrine of Illusions, we will postpone our discomfort for a moment by putting our hair up and dyeing it a green color. But once again, we will curse this outfit with the beak accessory. And we are a duck, sort of. Our final cursed outfit is really not as bad, but truthfully just doesn't look too much like what we're going for, which is a bluebird. Starting out by heading to the island trader, we will pick up a bluebird mask for 30 tarot root. And yes, we do look much more like Sonic than a bluebird already. So if that's what you want to personally make, this could be inspiration for you, I suppose. Then adding cloth and fish stew to the sewing machine to create this top, and cloth and a poppy and a little dye to create the bottoms, our outfit is complete with the addition of some blue shoes. Because once again, no orange. And we're Sonic. I mean, a bluebird. We're a bluebird. If you know my content well, you may know that I play Stardew exclusively on the Nintendo Switch, and with that I really grew up on Nintendo games, so it only felt right to include some Nintendo character costumes. Kicking this category off is Link from Zelda. As a kid, my favorite Zelda game was Wind Waker, so that is the image that often comes to mind when thinking of Link. Adding cloth and a cape carrot and cloth and blue jazz with some green dye mixed in there, our base outfit is complete. Then we'll just pop on some brown shoes and head to the Hat Mouse where we will purchase ourselves the Gnome's Cap for 1k which was unlocked for crafting every item. And then to give ourselves the true Link look, we'll dye our hair a blonde color. And we're Link from Zelda. Next is the most classic Nintendo character I think there is, Mario. To start, we will add cloth and an egg and cloth and a wild plum, dyeing both pieces the appropriate colors to make our overalls. Then we will put on brown shoes as we head to the Shrine of Illusions to give ourselves a little makeover before finding ourselves at the Island Trader on Ginger Island to pick up the small cap for 30 tarot root. And it's a me, Mario. <laughs> You cannot do Mario without Luigi, so following a similar process, we will make this costume with cloth and an egg and cloth and a wild plum, again dyeing to appropriate colors to create our overalls. Then, once again, heading to the Shrine of Illusions to fix all the hair, this time we will pick up the trucker hat from the Hatmos, which is unlocked for crafting 30 different items to complete our look. Just imagine there's an L in that white space and it will look just right, right? <laughs> To finish our Nintendo characters, we are making Toad, my personal go-to choice in all Mario Party and Mario Kart games. We will start by sewing together his outfit with cloth and plum pudding and cloth and an apple, dyeing the pants white. Now with a quick change of shoes to brown and a walk to the Shrine of Illusions to put on our bald cap, our costume is only missing the mushroom top. We have two options here, the easier choice to acquire is the star helmet made from cloth and a mushroom seed, or we can go with the mushroom cap which is a 1% chance drop from chopping down mushroom trees. Either way, the outfit is complete. For Halloween, you cannot go wrong with a basic, and a pirate costume is just that. Adding cloth and an ancient drum to the sewing machine, we get this corset looking pirate top, and then by adding cloth and a poppy and a little dye, we have a pleated skirt to match. Our shoes can be changed to brown, and then the final addition of the deluxe pirate hat found in chests in the volcano dungeon just pulls it all together. Another basic is a cop costume. To make ours, we will add cloth and a large goat milk as well as cloth and a blue jazz, dyeing both pieces the cop blue color to create our outfit. Adding a dark boot and heading to the hat mouse to purchase the official cap for 1k which is available after catching 24 different fish, our costume is complete. If you're looking for something basic but more medieval, the knight costume may be for you. Adding cloth and an iron bar, we will create our steel breastplate. Then with cloth and a pineapple and a bit of dye, we have a matching pair of pants. To pull the look all together, we will put on some matching shoes and for defeating 50 Pepperex, our reward from the Adventurers Guild makes us the perfect hat. And we've created a knight Halloween costume. A sailor costume is up next and ours will be lightly inspired from Sailor Moon. Starting with the top, we will add cloth and a pufferfish, dyeing the ascot red. Then we will add cloth and a summer spangle into our sewing machine, dyeing it a navy blue to create our pleated skirt. Finally, with the addition of red shoes and the sailor's cap, which can be obtained for 1k from the hat mouse after winning the festival of ice, the outfit is complete. Next, we are making a pilot. For our costume, however, we are not going to resemble a commercial airline pilot. Instead, we'll try to create a more Air Force-esque style of costume. To start, we'll add cloth and a bomb to our sewing machine to make ourselves a bomber jacket, and then by adding cloth and a strawberry with a bit of dye, we've created the pants. After putting on our dark boots, the final touch is simply to use our sewing machine one more time, adding cloth and a cinder shard to make us these shades. And we've become a pilot for Halloween. 
A basic costume that is very much a basic or a staple for Stardew Valley is a farmer outfit. There are a ton of ways you could go with this, but for me, I'll start by adding cloth and a large milk and cloth and a blueberry into the sewing machine to give us a pair of short overalls. And after that, I'll simply put on some brown shoes before heading to the Shrine of Illusions to give myself a more farmer-like hairdo, top it off by using the straw hat won at the Egg Festival, and we're a farmer. Or one version of a farmer, that is. A viking costume is up next, so to start we'll add cloth and chowder into our sewing machine to create this fringed vest, and for the bottoms we will add cloth and a poppy and dye it to match. This is a pretty simple outfit as all that is left is the addition of brown shoes and a warrior helmet which we will make by adding cloth and an ostrich egg into our sewing machine. And there is our viking costume. Taking the costumes back to professions, our next one is a chef. To make our chef's coat, we will add cloth and escargot to our sewing machine, and then for the pants, cloth and a strawberry, and a bit of black dye will get us what we want. Let's put on some dark shoes, and then as a finishing touch, we will head to the hat mouse to purchase the chef hat for 1k, which is unlocked for cooking every recipe in-game. And that's the costume. The next costume you'll definitely be able to find in a group of people, a clown costume. Clowns of all kinds are pretty scary to me, but the clown we are making today is on the lower end of that spectrum. Adding cloth and pyrite to our sewing machine, we get the perfect jester shirt. Then we will make baggy pants with cloth and a slime egg and dye it to match a color in the shirt. I'm personally going with yellow. For the final touches, I'll add cloth and a miner's treat into the sewing machine for this propeller hat, add some red shoes, and at the Shrine of Illusions, I'll put on what best resembles a clown wig, and we're in full costume. Kinda scary. <laughs> The last basic I'll share today is a fisherman. Adding cloth and a bullhead into the sewing machine, we get this fishing vest, and to go along with that, I'll sew cloth and a strawberry together with a little dye, pop on some green rubber boots, and at the sewing machine one more time, we will add cloth and a slime jack to create this fishing hat. And that's that. I think Willie would approve. Speaking of Willie, we've moved on to our next category of costumes inspired by Stardew Valley. And our first costume here is Mr. Key. We will start by adding cloth and a wilted bouquet into our sewing machine alongside cloth and a wild plum to create his outfit. Adding dark boots, we will then head to the Shrine of Illusions to dye our skin the signature Mr. Key Blue, throw on some shades, and in the Golden Walnut Room we will purchase a replica of his hat for 5 key gems to finish off the look. Almost identical. Slimes are a huge part of the game, so for our next costume, we will become one. Adding cloth and petrified slime to the sewing machine, we've created what is called the Slime Shirt. Now the goal is simple, become green blob. Sewing together cloth and a slime egg and dyeing it to match as well as adding our green shoes, we will then head to the Shrine of Illusions to finish off this look. Here we will change our skin and dye our hair and we are complete. The slimes don't even know what's coming. We visited the hat mouse so many times in this video already, it would be wrong to not create a costume inspired by him. And fittingly, we will start by heading out his way to pick up a pair of mouse ears for 1k which are unlocked for reaching a Ted Hart friend level with somebody. We will also make a onesie of sorts, adding cloth and cheese and cloth and a cranberry into our sewing machine, and for the final touches we will put on some tannish boots and head to the Shrine of Illusions to blend our hair, and there we have it. An outfit that vaguely resembles our astute businessman here. The last outfit relating to Stardew Valley is a trash can. No, this is in no way meant to be a jab at the game itself, there are just a lot of trash cans in the game, and we are going to resemble one. To start, we will put on our garbage hat which we got from basically digging up a bunch of garbage around town, then we will simply add cloth and some trash into our sewing machine, fittingly, to create our trash can top. And with cloth and a blueberry paired with a little dye, we have an outfit. The final touch is just these matching shoes, and we are a trash can now. Stardew Valley trash can inspired. I know that this wasn't a ton of Stardew specific outfits, but I do plan on making future videos making myself into each Stardew villager so you can think of this as a little taste into that. And be sure to let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. Okay, moving right along onto the magic of Disney. And this first outfit truly is magical. Shrek. We will start this masterpiece off by adding cloth and plum pudding alongside cloth and a strawberry with some dye to create our outfit. Then, adding brown shoes, we are ready to head to the Shrine of Illusions to put on a bald cap, dye our skin green, and for the finishing touch, the hat mouse will hook us up with this goblin mask, and the outfit is complete. Now what would Shrek be without Princess Fiona? So let's go! Using our sewing machine, we'll add cloth and a dwarf scroll, and cloth and a sunflower, and dye both pieces green to create her classic gown. From there, we will add brown shoes and head to the hat mouse to claim our tiara for 1k, and then at the Shrine of Illusions, we will give ourselves the ogre green makeover and change our hair to the reddish brown of Fiona's, and there we go. 
Moving from one princess to another, Princess Jasmine from the movie Aladdin is up next. Using the same tiara we used for Fiona, we will then create our outfit adding cloth and a rainbow shell for the top and adding cloth and an ancient fruit for the bottoms. I've added white crystal shoes here, but the tundra shoes in the game would be the perfect color match. The Shrine of Illusions will be our final stop as we change our hair to black and do a little updo, and by magic, we've created a Princess Jasmine costume. One of the biggest Disney favorites is next, Minnie Mouse. To start, we will head to the Hat Mouse, and although we won't be buying the mouse ears for this one, we will still be purchasing from them as we buy the Pokebo for 1k, which was unlocked for completing 10 help wanted requests. At the Shrine of Illusions, we will try to represent Minnie's black fur by dyeing our hair black, and then we will add cloth and a poppy seed muffin as well as cloth and a poppy to our sewing machine to create Minnie's polka dot dress. Because there are no yellow shoes, for the final touch we will put on some red ones, and the outfit is complete. To finish out the Disney costumes, we are making Robin Hood. Using the same outfit we made for Link, we will only make two alterations by using a different hat, the Archer's Cap from the Hat Mouse, and having our hair be more of a reddish brown than blonde. Short and sweet. Before we get into what I assume to be the highly anticipated viewer requests, there were a couple of costumes that I've classified as the extras, and to start this out, we will create a sea monster. To begin, I'll make the top using cloth and seaweed to create this kelp shirt. Then, heading to the island trader with 50 tarot root, we can purchase the grass skirt, and for the shoes, we'll put on some green shoes as well. Now to really complete this illusion of a sea monster, we will head to the shrine of illusions to dye our hair and our skin, and the costume is complete. To create a costume that I could see going head to head to the previous one in a battle, we are creating a Greek goddess. So in cloth and marble together, and cloth and honey and some dye, our Greek goddess's gown is complete. To finish the look off, we will simply change our shoes to white and put on our tiara from the hat mouse, and lastly at the Shrine of Illusions, we will add some gold earrings. Costume complete. Finally, a costume way out of left field we will make Where's Waldo, or for any non-North American viewers, Where's Wally. Using our sewing machine, we will add cloth and cranberry candy to create the classic striped shirt, and then adding cloth and a strawberry and dyeing it blue, our pants are complete also. Now with a change of our shoes and hair to brown, the final thing to be made is our hat through our sewing machine with cloth and maple syrup for a glasses Liz Wears Waldo costume. Okay, so if you were somebody who watched my series where I was making a random Halloween costume every day of Stardew Fall this October, you may have wanted very specific costumes and may have even requested them multiple times in the comments. Well, trust me, I saw your pleas and I was making note, and two in particular were requested over and over and over again, and another costume I did see a few times. But obviously, I couldn't put them in the daily series because all of those costumes were decided before the series even started. However, I will put them in now, so I hope you enjoy. I think this costume may have been the most requested, Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. And spoilers, I had no idea who this was, so here's my best attempt. Sewing together cloth and kyanite, we get a top that I felt was the closest thing we could make to his shirt. Then for the pants, I'll simply sew cloth and a strawberry and dye them a dark brown. Then we will add some matching shoes and head to the hat mouse where we will purchase our cowboy hat. To be honest, a dark cowboy hat found in the chests of the Skull Cavern would have fit better, I think, but it is what it is. Finally, we will head to the Shrine of Illusions to give ourselves the final touches, and that is my best attempt at Arthur Morgan. I also figured the cowpoke hat from the hat mouse might also work, so there's that as well. The next highly requested costume was Sans from Undertale, and surprise surprise, I once again had never heard of this character, but after looking at pictures, I think I am able to do a decent job with this one. Adding cloth and a field snack to our sewing machine, we will create this blue jacket that I think looks pretty similar to the jacket I've seen in the pictures. Then for the shorts, I'll add cloth and a blueberry and dye them black, and the shoe color isn't a perfect match, but light purple was the best I could do. And then for the piece de resistance, we will put on the skeleton mask we talked about earlier in the skeleton costume, and to really pull it all together, I will head to the Shrine of Illusions to hide my hair, and that's what I think is a pretty decent attempt at Sans from Undertale. Of course, I am not really sure, so definitely let me know in the comments. Finally, our very last viewer request and very last costume of all, we are making Gandalf the Grey. And don't worry, this is actually a character I know this time. So to start with this outfit, I'll sew together cloth and a potato and cloth and a strawberry and dye both pieces a dark grey. Now with a costume like this, we must go to the Shrine of Illusions and there we will dye our hair and change the style and of course add a beard. This could be the final outfit, but as a little addition, I'll sew together the witch's hat with cloth and a golden pumpkin to top it all off. 
And there we have an attempt at Gandalf the Grey. And just like that, we are through our 50 costumes in Stardew Valley. Both making the daily series and this video was actually a really great experience. I've really loved hearing all of your feedback on all the costumes and I hope you have enjoyed watching them as well. And just before we end this video, there is one last thing I'd like to go over. Every week I have been putting out polls for all of you to vote for your favorite costume from a selected few of each week and I most recently did a poll with the winning four costumes, so here are the results of that. Coming in fourth is the Cavewoman. A valiant effort, but it just didn't have the fanbase to back it. In third, Shrek. This placement honestly kind of surprised me as Shrek is of the people, but third it is. Finally, the runner-up is Cowgirl Barbie, leaving the frog costume as the winner for top costume in the Junimo B Halloween Costume Contest of 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave your favorite Halloween costume I made in the comments below. And if you made it this far in the video, I am honestly shocked, but so grateful for your support. And it's been so fun building this community with all of you. I am definitely going to do this series again next year. I would also love for you to share any recreations of the costumes you make yourself. And if you could tag me on Instagram to see them, that would be amazing. Speaking of Instagram, I don't often plug my other social media because I really don't want to bother any of you, but if you got this far in the video, I figure you must not hate me, so if you haven't followed me already on Instagram or Twitter or even joined the Discord, I would love to have you. I'll pop up my social handles here, but you can also find all of the links through my link tree linked on my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope all of you have the happiest of Halloweens and a great day whenever you may be watching this. See you next time, Junamobi out.